some extra time on our hands, so you might as well connect into the cosmos, right? Better for you guys if it's facing me or if it is facing you. Perfect, got it. Hey, I'm gonna mention this at the beginning of the class, but for those of you that are on, you might wanna grab uh, something to write with and a piece of paper just to take a couple little notes. Welcome to the talk class. Uh, I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, oh my gosh, this is gonna be such a, um, a fun, empowering day. And uh, I just wanna make sure ahead of time, before we really get rolling, if you guys can get some um, something to write with or you know, an iPad, paper and pen, um, you're gonna to wanna to take some, uh, just a small amount of notes to give you the procedure for step by step so that after the class you can get in there and and start uh, practicing and receiving your messages. So um, go quick, get something to write on if you need that. Again, I will share this with you. I was looking through, um, I have, oh my gosh, I've got tons and tons of talk messages that I've taken um, over the years. They're packed away. We moved in, in July last year. So I'm in, down in my meditation room right now. And um, I went to grab um, a couple of the messages that I haven't even looked at for a long time. And I found this is, this is my, um, oh my God, this is so embarrassing to show you guys. But when this very, very, very first happened to me, like the moment it happened to me and I decided to try to connect, um, I, I drew my own chart and I am like so not artistically inclined. So I found my first chart that I drew and I want to show you how bad of a drawer I am. Looks like this. That's how bad I am. <laughs> So we've evolved, thank, thank goodness. Um, and then I found this. Um, this is actually the very first message that came through. I just, I had a piece of paper on my desk. This is the first message. This one came the next day, but it was from my dad who had passed away. Um, just real simple. It just said, hi Zippy, which is my nickname for my dad. Um, Take care of Jack, who is, is our dog. He was sitting beside me at the time. So he was aware that Jack was there. And I put love to mom, which was kind of a sweet way um, of addressing my mom. Uh, so that was my very first message. Uh, so that was fun, fun to find that. And that actually, no, you know what? That's my second message. The first message um, didn't come from my dad. I, and I have it here. I'm going to read it to you. It's on my website. So the day that this occurred to me that I could communicate this way and I was trying it out, um, um, almost afraid to believe that this could happen, which is not like me. I'm really a super um, obnoxiously positive person, but I was almost assuming that this wasn't going to work because what would be the implications if it did? And so when I put my pendulum over my really crappy chart that I drew, this is the very first message I received. The message said, easy to translate with this medium, ready to begin this odyssey, this is it. Then I ask, because I have no idea what I'm doing, how this is happening, am I working with my high self for the greater good? And the answer comes through the pendulum in the chart. Yes, oh yes, love, time will tell, cusp of awareness, begin soon, we'll be able to measure gateway to other consciousness. So that's the true very first message that I received from this. Um, so that's kind of fun. I totally hadn't seen that, uh, that chart that I drew. <laughs> so thank goodness we've got a better chart now. Um, but I'm assuming everybody's back now um, and has a piece of paper right with my dog is barking upstairs. I'm so sorry. Um, we'll just have to work through that, I guess. I'm really excited to share this information with you. It's very easy to do. I've really simplified this down from when I first created the class. Um, we were in a different time and space back then, 2009, and um, there seemed to be more steps that were needed in order to keep a really clear, pure connection, um, and they worked really well. There were, there were very unique steps. There were um, um, formula statements. The formula was what got you kind of logged in to that um, sacred space without getting any interruptions. 
um, that we've, we've advanced. And uh, I'm very excited to really kind of hone this down and make it much, much easier for you guys to get your messages. I'm gonna tell you how this day is gonna play out. It's gonna be very easy. We're gonna be about an hour. Um, I'm gonna first start out with some basics. We're gonna go over the chart and the pendulum in your directions. Then I'm gonna talk about how you begin to receive a message, just a few helpful suggestions there. Um, and then actually getting the message. And we're gonna talk quite a bit about that and what, what helps and what isn't so helpful. Um, then we're gonna talk at the end about um, making sure that your message is pure um, and make sure that that message is coming from a place of um, high energy, um, love, unconditional love, uh, nothing wonky, uh, and we'll go over all of that at the end. Um, after that, I will take your questions and I'll get through as many as I can. I'm really trying to be mindful that um, we're not going over an hour, uh, 306. So um, we'll try to keep it to that. If there's more questions that you have after that, you can uh, email me at uh, hello at SuzanneSpoonerQHHT.com. Hello at SuzanneSpoonerQHHT.com. I will answer your questions. You can message me on Facebook. I will get to them as quickly as I can. All right, so we'll try to get most of them. I'm not gonna be walking you through getting a message today. I'm just gonna give you all of the steps that you need to do um, in order to re start receiving your messages, practicing. Okay, the very basics is that you have to have the tools in order to um, get your talk messages, right? And so for talk, the art of universal knowing, the tools are a pendulum and a letter chart. Now, um, back when I created this class, uh, my teachers, it was actually my dad, um, on the other side, he was helping me co-create this class, and um, he recommended that the, the stone for the pendulum would be rose quartz. Um, he says the frequency of the rose quartz crystal is in perfect alignment with this type of work. Um, and it, as you know, a rose quartz uh, is good for the third eye and for the heart. So it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? it? Just It flows really well with a rose quartz. Now, we're in a, um, a unique scenario, right? Uh, most people probably don't have pendulums. Um, or if you do have a pendulum, it's, it's made from a different type of stone or metal. What I know is I think we're going to be fine with this. I've been trying uh, different um, options, different stones, my necklaces, my rings on a necklace, and everything is working really good. Um, so I think you're going to be fine even if you're making a homemade pendulum, okay? And then if you want to after the quarantine and you want to get out and, and get one, um, I, my go-to would still be a rose quartz, but whatever floats your boat, whatever you like. So you need to have something hanging something with some weight at the bottom. I like this one because there's a little point at the end which makes it easier to see which letter the pendulum is going to or a narrow one. I have one over here, it's not rose quartz, but you can see it's kind of narrow. That works really well too. Um, okay, so we got that. Then we need the chart. So the top chart that I created looks like this. Let's see if you can see that. There you go. So my chart has 28 segments around that middle circle. Um, back when I first did this class, I had two extra uh, segments that I used for two other purposes. I really don't think that's all that necessary, but if you're making your own chart, um, at least you know one segment per letter you need. Um, and if you want a few extra and use them for a couple of different other reasons, I'll go over that, I'm sure at the end, um, you have that. Now, this is the important part, this circle. Um, gosh, I don't know how to tell you. Um, this is what I think about that circle. I think it's a portal. Um, and I think that's where the energy flows from and, and helps direct the pendulum, or, to, or excuse me, letter to letter. That's just my, my understanding. Um, and it, and it helps to, to be a stopping point for the pendulum as you pick it up and move on to a new word or a new sentence. Um, so here is my, my chart, just A to Z, and I have the top two open, just like that. 
Um, I'm just going to say this now. Every once in a while, um, I'd have a student that the pendulum didn't swing really wide. It's, it, their natural swing was very small. You just see a little bit of movement with the pendulum. Still works fine. Um, there's another workaround for that. But one other option you could do is you could write the alphabet down here closer to the circle, and that solves that issue right off the bat. Okay, got it. Okay. Now, we need to know your directions. For talk, we need four main directions um, to help you understand and clarify the message that's coming through. You need to have a yes direction, a no direction, a clearing direction, and a downloading direction. Now, you may already use the pendulum and you have those directions, and they may stay the same uh, for this class, but what I found is almost everybody's kind of coalesces into this uh, one way or the other way for talk. I don't know why it is. So a yes is either side to side or up and down. It can be either. The no will be opposite of whatever that is. My yes is side to side. My no is up and down. Most no's are kind of, got it? Okay. So um, you need to just hold your pendulum up and you can either ask it out loud or think it. It's actually faster if you think it. Telepathy works better with this, which is good because it, it kind of gets your telepathy muscle strengthened up. But I'm just asking it to show me my no, which is up and down. I'm opposite. There it goes. Nice swing. And then in my head, I just say thank you to it and it stops. That's, that's how it stops. And then I'll ask it to please show me my yes direction. And I'm not moving my hand, it's moving my hand, um, but it's gonna start swinging yes now. Sorry about the dog. Human life, thank you. Okay, so I've got our no, my no and my yes. You get your no and your yes. And then we're gonna ask it to do the, its clearing direction. It's clearing things out, so it's gonna be either clockwise or counterclockwise for talk. Um, so my clearing direction is clockwise. I'm going nice and big there. I'm going to say thank you. And now I'm going to ask it the download direction, which will be opposite of clearing. It's counterclockwise. And those are my directions. Now, if you're just starting out with talk, you might ask your directions um, each time before you start because it's, you know, you're kind of um, getting things programmed in and it, it can change or maybe your mood's in a different place and it changes it. So maybe uh, before you start to get a message, just double check what uh, your directions are, okay? So yes and no is either across or up and down. Clearing and downloading is either clockwise or counterclockwise. It's got that. Okay. The last thing that I want to make sure that you really do is that you document your messages. Make sure you're writing down your messages because it'll be amazing. Um, you know, you'll look back on, on these messages and, and you'll be able to see um, so easily how they're coming through you, not from you, which it is you, but um, you, get, you get what I mean. Um, so the more you document the messages, the more you're gonna see your um, um, advancement and in, in how your messages are coming through. The different um, souls that you connect to are going to have a different speak, so, so to speak. Um, it's not probably gonna sound like the way that you would talk. Um, the phrasing is gonna be a little bit different and that's cool. Um, I'll give you an example. When, when this very first started happening to me, I started getting messages and I didn't know what the heck I was doing and I didn't know what it was. And um, my husband came home from work early one day. I wasn't expecting him. I was sitting at the kitchen table and I had my pencil and my chart and a piece of paper and I'm writing my messages out. And, and he comes home and, and I'm like, oh shoot, I hadn't told him what's going on. And I like covered up my pendulum and my chart and I'm like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, hey what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. He's like, what are you doing? I'm like, okay, here's what's going on. I'm getting messages. And he, he's a, an engineer. So, <laughs> no. <sighs> so I read him one of my messages and it was um, quite deep. It was, <laughs> it was actually, it was, um, okay, I'll read it to you. This is the message that he gave me. I'm going to fill this in for you a little bit. This is the message. 
We now respectfully request your time to imagine universal expressions of thought transfer and matter. Thoughts are transferred with imagination and love. When you have a thought and imagine that thought as a possibility, then matter is charged and you create a probability. Then you manifest your details, establishing the assured outcome. Opening your heart is the depositing of gratitude, linking the reality to the matter. Matter can be positively charged or negatively charged. Imagination is the power to manifest your dreams. Power in the fourth dimension will be expressed as power only understood as enlightenment. Okay, well, if you know me, that's not how I talk, right? So I read this to my husband, and I know he meant this not unkindly, but he says, wow, you're smart. You're not that smart. <laughs> Like, I know, I know. See, it's coming through me, not from me. But that's what I mean by the messages probably won't um, sound completely like they're coming from me, which is cool. You're tapping into other consciousness all over, and they have their own um, mannerisms and ways of, of communicating. Oh my gosh, sorry, I got off on a tangent there, but it's so much fun. Okay, so document your messages. That was the point of that. Now, we are ready to begin a message. So there's a little bit that you wanna do in order to get yourself in the right head space, heart space for this. Um, if you are really grumpy, don't do this. If you are super duper duper tired, don't do this, okay? You need to have a pretty good level of energy to do this. Um, the first few times that you do this, you might get really, really sleepy. That's pretty common. I, I have actually fallen asleep in this chair um, when I was first understanding what all of this was about. It's a lot of energy coming in and it's okay. Um, but start off with um, your head and your heart in a, in a unified field. And that means do just a little bit of meditation and it doesn't have to be a long 20 minute you know, meditation, just uh, a couple of minutes, three minutes. Um, you know, that I am, I am kind of a crafty meditator, um, so I, I do things uh, the easy way. And so when I meditate, I just, I pick two words, um, I just let them come into my mind, and I'll say one of the words as I breathe in, and one as I breathe out, and I'll just keep repeating it. It gives my left brain something to do, and I'm concentrating on my breathing, which settles me down. Um, so there's, there's a super easy way that you can um, kind of let go of the outside world and your frustrations and just get yourself centered. Um, once you have meditated for just a couple of minutes, um, then what I want you to do is I just want you to clear your space. When I'm clearing my space, and it's, it's already doing it, um, out loud or in my head, I'm asking it just to clear out anything that no longer serves my highest and greatest good, um, clearing out uh, any energy that um, isn't high enough to be in my space. Um, that's about it. I really don't, I'm not too fussy on that. I just, I clear out everything that, that I don't need anymore. I'm waiting for it to finish. And then when it's done finishing uh, the clearing work, then I'll ask it to download love, light, wisdom, knowledge, uh, protection, information, all in my highest and best good. And there it goes, it's spinning around. I'm not spinning it. There we go. Okay, so for those of you that have taken the talk class and you had the, um, the talk formula uh, statements, we're letting go of that now. We're past that. If you really, really love using your statements, go ahead and do that, of course. But I think we're at the point in evolution now that you can do a clearing and a download after you do a little meditation and you're centered, you're ready to go. I forgot to mention, in that meditation, I do think it's helpful to surround yourself with some white light. I always picture myself in like the Star Trek tube. I don't even like Star Trek, but I think it's, it, it's applicable here. I put myself in that tube of white light and um, that keeps my space really sacred and, and um, 
and um, I don't want to say protect it because I don't believe in fear, but um, it's a good space. It's a good uh, white light space. All right, so you've meditated, you've done your clearing, you've done your downloading, right? Now, as you're beginning with this process, you need to know what it feels like as the pendulum is moving purposefully um, from letter to letter so that you're not getting gobbledygook words. Um, so one of the very most important things I can tell you is that as you're starting with this, start doing some um, practice letters practice words and practice phrases because your pendulum is going to move clockwise or counterclockwise and um, it, it can take a little while before it gets to its intended letter. If it's moving and it hasn't gotten to its intended letter but you're recognizing, you know, maybe it's um, the letters W and uh, it, as it gets over S, you, in your head you think S and the pendulum will stop at S. Um, your thoughts can influence this and, and the, you really want to kind of get clear and just be an observer to this and not influencing it, right? So meditation helps you clear. The clearing and the download gets you extra ready to go. And then um, doing the practice letters, words, and uh, phrases it helps you understand what it feels like with your pendulum as it's moving from letter to letter. Um, I'm going to show you this in a minute on the chart, but I want to say this. If you're getting nonsense words, gobbledygook, um, it's because you're recognizing a letter before the pendulum got to its designated spot, okay? If the words aren't making sense, you need to go back and do more practice letters, practice words, and practice phrases. Get the feel of your pendulum so that you know exactly where it's going to, all right? So here is a very important note. With your pendulum, remember we've got this amazing little portal here in the center. It works best if you keep your pendulum super duper close to the paper and to that portal. Um, the energy is stronger there for this. And if you lift it up, you know, an inch or two off of that, not only is it harder to tell which letter it's pointing to, but it's like the energy dissipates and it's not as strong. So the very best thing I can recommend is tap your pendulum down, get it right on the center of that circle, and then just barely pick it up. So I'm going to have it spell, um, I'll have it spell talk. So I'm, I'm telling it right now what letters to go to because I'm, I'm learning what it feels like to purposely go to one letter to another. So I'm asking it to go to T. And as you see, it's pretty strong over that letter T. Now, I'm gonna ask it to go up to A. There it goes. I'm not moving it, it's moving itself. And it's pretty solid over A. Now I'm gonna ask it to go to U. There it goes, and to K. Now, if you have a double letter, um, let's do Mississippi, that's a good one to practice on. Um, there's M, I, S. If it's a double letter, it's gonna stay on that letter. Usually after you recognize the letter, it will move on, but if it's a double letter, it will stay there, indicating there's two of those. M, I, S, S, I, S, S, I, P, P, I. When it's done, it'll come to the center and just stop. Pretty cool, huh? You know what I think would be a good, I think I used to give this example when I was teaching this class one-on-one. -on -one. Um, the first time, ask it to go to each letter out loud or in your head. Let it travel to each one, and then you can kind of feel what that's like with your pendulum. Or maybe in the middle of it, switch it up and tell it to go. I'm just, I just told it to go back up to A. And again, telepathy is a lot faster than saying it out loud. Um, you're taking a step out there. So there's, that's practicing some letters. Uh, you know, let's do love. I'm just asking it to spell out the word love. I'm not saying each letter in my mind, just the word. 
There it goes. Thank you. Um, we'll do Suzanne because that has a double letter S U Z A. And then it's just going to swing down to the end and hang out there extra because there's two. I'm recognizing that in my head and E. Um, so next, let's do a phrase. Let's do, um, let's do I love you. So three words. Tapping it down to start things out. And I'm asking it to spell I love you. There's the I, L, O. It's turning around. You can go like that. It'll find its letter. B. Now, well, okay, let me stop. Well, it was turning around. If I guessed G, it would start going there because I'm at that point I'm directing it to G um, when it was on its way over to V. And that's how you get godly good chords. So this is why you want to practice this. It's going to E, L O V E, Y, O, U. So that's super important. Make sure you do your practice letters. Um, words and phrases so that you understand what it feels like. If you're getting words that are nonsense, they don't make sense, you need to go back and do more of that practicing because you're just not quite getting the feel of exactly where the pendulum is intending to go. Now we're ready to get a message. Um, this is so exciting. Um, so this is what I do. Um, you don't have to do it this way, um, but this is what I have always done from the beginning. Um, for some reason, I just always ask, um, I take my pendulum off the chart and I ask, is there a message that would like to come through? Um, it's always yes, by the way. <laughs> um, but yes, it's, it's saying yes, there is a message. And then I like to know who it is that I'm talking to. Um, I just, I wanna know who I'm communicating with because I'll, I'll communicate differently with my dad um, versus God or, um, uh, others that have come through. I, I like to know who I am having this message with. So what I do is I'll, I'll tap it down and I, I'll just ask who would like to come through. Yeah, this one's been coming through a lot lately. T-O-T-H. Thoth, Toth, or Toth, whichever way you want to pronounce that. But Toth is, um, he's a great teacher of mine, and most of my messages the last few months have been from him. He's um, on YouTube. I've got a really great series of messages that came through him that I just read to you guys. Um, beautiful messages. So Toth is the one that's coming through. That's who my message is from. Um, so now that I know that, then what I do is I, I recognize him. Uh, usually I'm you know, either writing this out or I'm putting it on my laptop. And I'll just, I'll um, acknowledge them and I'll say, you know, hi, Toth, Toth, Toth. <laughs> and he'll usually say, hi, Suzanne, or hi, Susie. Um, and then I just clear my mind out. I don't want to put any input into this message. I want to be a really clear channel to the information that's coming through me. Um, so this is a, a practice. Um, you have to kind of step back. And just let the information come through, document the information as it's coming through. If you can only go a word or two, um, and then you need to write it down, just set your pendulum down, write what you have, pick it back up. It's gonna pick right back up to where uh, it stopped. It's amazing, it, it is very efficient that way. Um, but um, I let them give me the whole message um, Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to keep stopping and starting the message. Um, it's like the best analogy I can come up with is if you have a car that's low in its battery and you've barely charged it up and you turn the engine off and you turn the engine on and you turn the engine off and you turn the engine on, um, it won't stay charged. Uh, let them give you the full message. Um, don't be debating too much in your mind. Just let the, let the information come through at first. You, you can get into that debate mode with them as you get more um, comfortable with this process. But let the message come through. Um, when, when you have the full message, and you'll know because the pendulum just comes to a stop. It's just done. It's just an amazing thing. You can almost feel it, the energy just um, leaving at the end of the message. 
what I usually will do, um, especially at the beginning, I wanted to double check that I wasn't influencing the message and that the message was correct um, in how they were wanting me to receive it. So I would just, um, you know, I would set the message beside me and I take the pendulum off the chart and I, I tell my pendulum, um, we're partners here, and I, I say, listen, I'm gonna read this message and you swing yes as long as I have it correct and if there's something that I need to change or I have something wrong, then swing no. And sure enough, um, if it swings no, note exactly where you're at in the message and that's the word that needs to change. Um, it's an amazing um, way of uh, uh, proofreading your uh, messages. Okay, so, I, so I'm just gonna read um, the same message I just read to you and you can just see my pendulum is just gonna come over this way, swinging yes. Uh, we now respectfully request your time to imagine universal expressions of thought transfer and matter. Thoughts are transferred with imagination and love. And so I got the words right, is swinging yes all the way through. Um, that's just a really good way to proofread the message. And then if it swings no, then note where it starts to swing no and take it back over the chart and ask what word would you rather me use? Um, and it will, you know, sometimes it will think this is thinking, 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 thinking. They're, they're trying to find the best earth word um, or concept to bring forth. And then it will start spelling out again. And then you can rewrite that part of your message. That's pretty cool. Okay, I hope that I hope that's clear. I hope I'm not going too fast. Um, but it's really pretty basic. This isn't hard. It's just kind of learning the, um, the feel of, the, of your pendulum, getting yourself out of the way just letting the message come through you, which is kind of fun. Um, now, some people say, oh my gosh, do I always have to use this? And is it, you know, always letter to letter? So this is really cool. And some of you will pick this up maybe a little faster than others, and it's fine no matter how it goes. Um, some people will use the chart forever. That's how they get their messages. Um, I do. Um, I can do automatic writing, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, but this, process of the pendulum and the chart um, puts me in a meditative state. It's very soothing and calming to me and I get very clear. Um, so I enjoy that and I just, you know, I, I'll go maybe a few words or a sentence. It doesn't bother me. I set the pendulum down. I write down what the, what I received, pick it back up. It just, it will go right to where it ended before and, and begin again. Mid-sentence, it doesn't have to be um, at the end of a sentence. Um, so a lot of times when the messages are really deep like that, I'll almost stop word to word to make sure I'm really translating this the way that, it's, that I'm receiving it. Um, it's up to you how you do that. Now, what you'll find as you, um, <laughs> what you'll find as you get going with this is you'll start knowing the rest of the sentence before it spells out. Um, so, you know, your pendulum will start and it will, you know, maybe, um, Maybe the sentence is, this is the beginning of something very big. Um, and it goes to this is, and then you know the rest of the sentence. I put my pendulum down, I write it out. Um, and then I'll keep doing that. And then I just go back and proofread afterwards to make sure I was picking up on the words. If you're watching it spell out, for example, the first word of a sentence, um, and you know the next two words. I'm giving a random example. Um, if you've got that right, it's gonna to go to the next word um, straight away. It's just, it's a, that's what I mean by do your practice letters, words, and um, phrases so that when you get going with this, you can kind of get a feel of um, your speed and um, how you can best receive those messages clearly who you're going to get messages from. Um, this is so much fun. It can be um, your loved ones that have passed. Um, my father, who had uh, was a suicide, sadly, um, was the first person that I knew came through. That very, very first message, I didn't know who that was coming from. It ended up being a God message. I found out later. Um, but my dad came through first. Um, and then other relatives, my grandparents, um, my, uh, I had a brother that didn't come to term. He was the second person that came through 
uh, for a message for my mom. Uh, and then um, some really interesting scenarios happened. I didn't think at that when I was really new with this that I could get a message from God or source or you know whatever you want to put to that. It just seemed um, outside of my realm of possibilities. And so one day I was sitting down and I was um, having a message with my dad, um, which was awesome because it was my dad's personality, absolutely. And um, but he had this more um, universal view on things. And obviously, if he was, um, you know, if he passed by his own choice, um, he had some sadness and 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 issues here on earth. But um, he just had this very enlightened view in these messages, and it was it was healed my heart so much to know that he was having amazing experiences. So at the end of one message, um, I just asked him, you know, what are you going to do now, you know, now that we're done with this message? And he says, well, I'm going to go sit with God, and I'm going to, you know, we're going to talk about, you know, my life and, um, you know, what I'm doing here. I think he was help, helping souls cross over, pets cross over um, at that juncture. And I said, oh my gosh, I said, do you think I could ever get a message from God? And, and I said in my head, you know, I'm not ready. You know, I'm not ready for that. You know, but maybe, maybe in, um, maybe in a couple of months or a year, maybe that would be a good time to do that. And he said, of course you can. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I totally put it in the back of my mind. So it just seemed like, that's so weird. That would be so weird. Um, and it wasn't more than a week later and I sat down I did all the things I needed to do you know to get connected in and I put my pendulum on my chart and I said you know you know do I have a message yes and who wants to who wants to connect and it went to G and I thought oh you know probably one of my grandmas or grandpas and then it went down to O and I went oh 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 no and then it went up to D and I went Whoo, we're doing this we're doing this and it was a God message and it was so beautiful. And it was, you know, funny actually, you know, God has a great sense of humor. Yeah, you know, I asked him about that and he says, you know, who do you think invented humor? You know, source, I tell you, source is endless. Um, so all of that is possible. I've talked with angels, I've talked with ETs. Um, there's one ET that um, has come through several friends. He's, um, oh my gosh, he's hilarious. He has a great sense of humor. Um, his name is KIG, K-I-G, and he says it's an acronym for Kindred Imagination for Growth. Um, he's been a great teacher. I've had a very, um, um, very serious teacher. His name is Rabios, R-A-B-I-O-S. I had to double spell that one out because I'm like, I've never heard that name before. Um, and he's, he's, um, he's the one that gave me that message I gave you, that very deep one is Rabios. Um, I talked with my high self. Um, that's a lot of fun. I talked with um, my cells in other lifetimes and in the future. Um, oh my gosh, it's, it's endless. It's, um, it's all possible. So, you know, you can um, purposefully ask to speak to somebody. Um, how I tend to do it is, you know, before I come down to my meditation room and I do a message, um, you know, I'm already thinking, you know, what do I want to have happen in this experience? You know, what would be helpful to know more about or, or garner some support about? And so I think my wheels are turning already for this. I think you who um, decided to do this class, you know, you've been thinking about it a little bit and it's been getting um, things opened up for you so that you're ready to do this work. So it works that way. And so I come down and, you know, if I really have been pondering, you know, an issue or a problem, um, it tends to be the one that comes through has that information that will help me um, understand what I need to do to move past that. It's pretty helpful. It's amazing. We're also amazing. We have all of this information inside of us. This is just finding a way to tap into that. So, um, who you speak with can be anybody. Um, keep your mind open. Uh, if you do wish to, to speak to somebody um, in particular, then just put that that um, intention out. And you know, as you're as you're clearing and downloading, I, I want to speak with my dad. Um, I want to speak with my dog that passed. Oh, oh, I speak with my um, my animals that are alive right now. <laughs> we just had a dog that had surgery. Um, on her leg, poor thing, big surgery. And uh, I did a very 
sweet message with her. So I'm like, you know, I, what else can I do to help you? And um, she was awesome. She had some really good advice. <laughs> so that she was, she's going to do this. She's going to be fine. Um, so anything is possible. Gosh, how do I even say this? Um, I had a message that um, I was with, it was a teacher that was coming through and he um, kind of bilocated me um, in the message to a room in uh, New York City. The, oh my gosh, it's gonna come to you. Anyways, important place in New York City. Oh my gosh, I can see the building, it's tall and green. Uh, United Nations, oh my Lord. <sighs> okay, it, um, by looking me to a room in the United Nations where I was watching um, and watching in my head and receiving information about a meeting that was going on there. Um, very interesting, totally unexpected. Um, but why not, right? Everything is possible. Okay, so keep your mind open that your messages can come um, from all places, all beings. Um, and because you are enveloped in this um, tube, bubble, pyramid of light, um, your messages are going to stay very protected and pure. How to know that your messages are pure. Now, there are people I know that have the come from the culture of negative entities or the belief systems of, uh, of negative energies. I, I don't entertain that at all, really. I don't. And therefore, I don't have those experiences. Um, it just doesn't serve me. I'm done with fear. But I know not everybody is in that place. And that's okay, because we're all where we need to be at this time. Um, but that can freak people out, because what if I get messages from uh, a lower entity? What if somebody tries to attach to me? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? What if? Um, you shouldn't have any problems with that because of what you've done to protect yourself, number one. Um, Sometimes, I don't call them negative entities. If anything, I'll call them lower energies. They're just, they're not as advanced yet, right? Um, I think of myself as, you know, maybe as an adolescent when I made some poor choices, um, I wasn't as advanced as I am now, I hope, <laughs> right? Um, not bad, just not there yet. Um, that's how I look at it. If they come through, if they get through that shield, um, you will know um, because the message, the tone of the message will change. If the messages are um, become bossy, if they're inappropriate, if they're unkind, that's what's happened. Just the lower energies come in and they're kind of just, you know, I don't know, experimenting, playing with you. Um, here is the most important information I can give you if you have this experience or that's your belief system. Don't entertain them, okay? Don't entertain them. If, you know, um, I've had it before where I'm getting a God message and it's all good and love and light and everything and then the message changes and it and it gets a little um a little bossy or um a little unkind um i know that's not a god message i i know that so i know something has come in and so i don't get upset i don't get fearful at all i just go neutral and actually i try to go beyond neutral i just i just send love to it and what you do is you just take your pendulum off the chart, you stop the message, stop it, you're hanging up. You take your pendulum off the chart and you just ask to do a clearing. Just clear, clear any energy out of your space that isn't in this highest and greatest level for you. Just clear it out. I send them love, I mean, you know, thanks for popping in, but you can leave now. Um, you can't be in the space with me. And I just clear them out. I, I usually will just send them to the light, you know, I think they're just a little bit lost, you know, go to the light. Oh, and look at it. It's really, it's really, really, really clearing there. Um, and then once it's done clearing, then I'll just go back and I put my pendulum on the chart. And it's kind of cool to see because um, you won't realize till after you've done this, but um, the pendulum moves a lot faster and clearer. Um, it can get kind of sluggish when that lower energy um, comes in, but it'll be like boom, 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 letter to letter to letter um, after you clear that out. And because I don't hold any fear for that and I don't entertain those conversations, um, then the messages go right back on track again. Um, 
I had a student once when I was really, really new at teaching talk that um, she entertained the conversation. She kept the conversation going with this lower energy or this lower part of herself. I mean, it could, could be that, who knows? We're all one, right? Um, and this, um, I should, I'm, not, I'm not laughing, it's just, it just got to be so ridiculous. So she, this message was that she had to go out and buy an Apple laptop. She didn't have the money for that. Uh, but she had to go out and buy an Apple laptop and um, she had a health condition and she had to um, not take her medicine. And, you know, it's just, it was not appropriate at all. And she decided to keep having conversations with us and it spun out of control. It was crazy. And I said, no, I, I told you, don't, don't do that. Hang up, hang up immediately, clear your space, go take a walk, go get some food. Um, mm -hmm come back when you feel like your head's in a better place and then do this. Um, so I don't think that happens very often. Um, you know, I can't remember the last time that happened to me as you're beginning, you know, things are happening. I actually had, um, this is a very neat example. I had, um, I had a message that was going and then it got off kilter and it was a little, um, a little bossy and, I, you know, I just took my pendulum off immediately. I, I cleared my space and, and I was thinking of, you know, that energy that was coming in and I just bombed it with love. And I you know, said, so, you know, you're, you're, you need to go now and, and, you know, go to the light, have some, you know, peace. Um, and, and I don't know, I may have continued the message or I may have come back another time. But a few days later when I was getting a message, um, I asked who's here and it, and it says, I'm, I'm the energy that was interrupting your message the other day. And I said, oh, okay, you know, what, what do you wanna share with me? And it says, um, I was lost um, and I'm sorry I interrupted your message, but um, where I was, it was like darkness. And when you are doing this work, it's like really bright light. And I was so interested to see what was going on with this really bright light, like a moth to a flame, right? Um, and, and it said, you helped me cross over and I'm in a much better place. And I just wanted to come back and tell you thank you. So, I mean, how can you, um, how can you have fear over that? You know, it's just in a different level of, of experience. Um, but if you have that, please don't worry about it. Please don't entertain it. Don't continue the conversation, hang up. Um, clear your space and come back and do it again when you're ready, then everything's going to be just fine. That's why this works so good. Um, and hopefully that will help um, anybody that has fear about those things to let go of that and move on because, oh my goodness, life gets so much easier um, once you do that. Okay, I think that's it. You got the basics, your chart, your pendulum, your four directions. Um, you're going to document your messages um, and see how those evolve over time, which is going to blow your mind. Um, you know how to begin to receive a message that you're going to meditate for a few minutes to get yourself centered. Um, you're going to take your pendulum, you're going to clear your space of anything that no longer serves you, clear the space of the room that you're in, um, download love, light, wisdom, um, uh, information, everything for your highest and best good. If you're new to this, do your practice letters, words, and phrases. Um, so you've got that feel. When, once you've got that, then ask if there's a message for you. Who is it? And then let the message flow all the way to the end. And then at the end, if you have questions that haven't been answered, they'll probably be answered within the message. Go back and ask those questions for clarity. Um, when you get done with your message, take your pendulum and reread the message in your mind or out loud and tell your pendulum to swing yes, um, as long as you've got the message correct. Um, and if it decides to swing no, then uh, find out where it started to swing at and then take it back over your chart to see um, what you need to do in order uh, to correct whatever they want you to correct. I think that's it. The first question that I want to touch on was that you mentioned automatic writing. Thank you. Um, yes. So the chart and the pendulum are the tools. And why that works so well is because 
as you get started with this, you'll know that you're not moving your hand and the pendulum is moving very specifically to one letter, not another. So, you know, I think that helps share your doubt and your worry to accept that this message is coming through you. Um, it's a little bit, I think it can be a little more doubtful if you just sit down with a piece of paper and start writing and, you know, you just don't know um, if you're inputting there um, or if it's coming through you. But as people get going with this, there's been quite a few people um, that, you know, once they get the feel of everything and they know what it feels like to have that um, information flowing through them, then they will go to the keyboard or a pen and paper and be able to do it that way. And that works. I do that too, but I'm, I, I prefer the chart. It just makes me, um, um, like I said, get in that kind of meditative space. I enjoy the feeling of that. Um, so there you go. There's that answer. How do you hold the pendulum and write at the same time? Oh, I don't. I, I hold the pendulum. I set it down and I write and I take the pendulum up and I let it go for a while. I put it down and I write. It's no big deal. How often per session would we normally clear or download? Just at the beginning or as needed? You probably will only need to do it at the beginning. If you, again, like if you feel like your message isn't real clear or there's an interruption there, then, then you can clear any time. But you probably just need to do it at the beginning. Can you ask questions or should you only ask, ask spirits mess for messages? Yeah, you can definitely do that. Um, you can definitely ask your own questions. You don't have to, I mean, the information is going to be coming from, you know, somewhere, right? You don't have to know where it's coming from. But yeah, there's been many times in my life where I've been at kind of a crossroads and I'll just, you know, I'll come down and say, you know, you know, what direction is best um, and see the information that comes in. Um, thank you for asking that because that reminded me of something I wanted to say. I don't ever encourage people to use this process as a predictive tool. Um, you know, am I going to get that job? Um, am I going to be with this partner? Um, because everybody has free will and we're in this one moment of now. Um, I'll ask, you know, are things looking good right now for this outcome and see how things are looking now? But, you know, somebody can turn left in a decision and reshuffle the whole deck. So I, you know, sometimes people say, well, I, you know, I asked if I was going to, you know, move. Um, and then I ended up, and then it said yes, but I didn't, you know, what's wrong with that? Well, it's, it's not meant to be a predictive tool. Um, it's meant to give you support where you're at right now in that, that moment. Okay, I think that's it. On that. <laughs> okay, my pendulum moves real slow. Not sure it's working. How do I know? Okay, so that's so cool. Okay, so sometimes the pendulums move fast, sometimes they move slow. My intent to go pretty fast, and there's not a wrong or right on this. It's just how your energy reacts with it. But here's um, an experiment you could try. When they're moving really slow, in your mind or out loud, just ask it to move faster. It generally will follow what you're requesting there. Um, if it's moving too fast, um, ask it to slow down a little bit, and it, I've done that and it works really, really well. So yeah, just kind of work with it. It's, um, it's an amazing field of energy you're in. Okay, this is from Pistol Pete. Can you put a PDF of the chart for us to download? Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, let me think on that. I'm re reformatting my whole website. Um, and that was on the talk class before. So let me just, let me think on that because I almost want to do a whole redesign of it, but eventually maybe yes. Okay, I think you talked about this in the original video, the announcement video, but here goes. Can you please talk about the two spaces that are empty on the chart? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so originally um, those two spaces were used for a couple of different reasons. Um, the, probably the one that got used the most, we, in that empty space, we wrote uh, down that segment, new word, new word. Um, and what that was helpful for at the time was if you were getting a word in your head, it just, it, it wasn't going to be that you're picking up the wrong word. Um, there was a better way to say that. The pendulum would go up to that set, that piece of the pie and where it said new word and then you'd go, okay, I'm, I'm off, you know, 
tell me what the word is. I found over time that it's just easier to, to proofread with the pendulum um, afterwards instead of doing that. I think the other blank space was used um, for numbers. So if in a message, say there's a, um, a long number that was going to be used, um, instead of spelling out the letter of this long number, the pendulum would go up to numbers. Um, some of the students, like up in this corner, would do a, a smaller circle with like zero through nine, and they would go up there and get the number, you know, that way instead of spelling it, you know, 1,972, you know, instead of spelling that all out, they just go up there after they hit the number, you know, after the pendulum came in, up to the number segment, they go over there. So they're kind of like free spaces. I mean, if you can think of a, of a helpful, um, way that you can use that, then that's great. If I was going to redesign this chart, um, I would probably just do the 26 because they're just not that necessary anymore. What if your text comes through excruciatingly slow? Um, it takes some time sometimes. Sometimes, um, be patient. Sometimes people take off with this and the messages are coming in really fast and, and sometimes it's super, super slow. Um, it's just how your energy is lining up with this and it doesn't make it better or worse either way. It's just the way it is. Um, but again, use your, um, your mind and ask it to move faster and see if, you know, I think the more you practice, the more efficient you're going to get with it. If, if that's happening and you just started, um, it's just the very beginning. Don't worry about that. It'll, it'll speed up and you can ask it to speed up. Do you have a best way to connect with someone else's higher self, someone who is living now? Oh, well, yes. Um, I've done that many times. Um, yeah, you know, when I, I'll sit down and connect in, um, do my meditation and all, my clearing, my downloading, and I'll just ask, you know, if it's appropriate, I'd like to speak to the high self of my mom or um, uh, one of my kids or, you know, whatever. And, you know, it's, it, it, because you're coming from a place of love, um, and they're coming from a place of love as their high self, that, that information um, is available. I, I don't think I've ever, I don't think I've ever gotten a no. I don't think it, maybe once, but no. Yeah, but you, yeah, yeah, you can connect into anything. Um, you can connect, in, you can connect into a crystal. You can connect in to um, anything. I mean, there's, there's no limitations here. I thought Suzanne said she can talk to her future self. So what do you ask your future self if you connect with him or her? <laughs> well, wh whatever interests you, you know, you can ask, um, you know, ask your future self. Uh, oh my gosh, what would I ask my future self today? Um, I would ask my future self, um, what were some of the lessons that I learned in the time of 2020 and uh, the great shift? Um, I'd ask my future self what it knows that I don't know. Uh, I'd ask what it's curious about, what it would like to know. Uh, I can always come up with questions. I mean, it's, it's, it's up to you what you want to ask it. She okay. says, I have a hard time figuring out what letters I'm being directed to. Is there a way to make it clearer? Yes. Do practice letters, practice words, and practice phrases. Start with the letters. Just Tell it which letter that you want it to move to and let it get there and stay there and let it hang out um, so you know that it's absolutely going over that letter. The more you practice, the easier that gets. Can you offer the dimensions of your chart circle to use when we make our own? Yeah, um, I don't have a ruler here. Um, mm -hmm. How about this? On the YouTube clip, when we get that up, um, down in the descriptions, I'll give you the dimensions. I don't have them right now. I don't know them. <laughs> I ask it to spell a word, and it just goes to the first letter. It just goes to the first letter. I never really had that happen. Um, I would, as soon as you recognize that letter, say the first letter, um, then it should move on its own to the next letter. That that's how that works. Um, so if it's just hanging out over one letter, and that's not the word like A, 
um, then I would just ask it to go to the next letter and just help it help it move along. It's learning a system too, you know. The um, I'll tell you this, way back in the day, I was connecting with a friend of mine on the other side who had been uh, killed. And he and I were talking about what it's like from, from his perspective to connect with me through talk. And he says um, he, says he went to classes uh, to learn how to connect with me, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, and he says, it's like learning another language, but in frequency. So it's not just us that are learning a new process. It, it's, it's perhaps, you know, our loved ones that are learning how to communicate with us in a clear and easy way. Um, and it's getting our vibration and the vibration of whoever or whatever we're tapping into in alignment. So there's, I think there's a lot going on here. Um, and that's why people can get really, really tired um, doing this, especially as you're first learning. Uh, there's just, there's a lot of energy going on here. So the more you practice, the, the gentler and the more positive that you are with yourself, take it little bits at a time, but keep, keep at it. It should develop a really nice, easy flow to it. Okay. Here I have another question. You ready? Yep. This is from Christiane. How do you use your mind but keep it out of the way of the message coming through. That's good. You know, I kind of go into uh, a reporter mode um, where, you know, if you, if you were a reporter and you're asking somebody a question and you're taking down the information, um, you're, you're just trying to concentrate on, on that, that information and write it down. Um, you're stepping back. So, you know, if, when, when I was first getting messages from my dad, who you know was one of my best friends, I missed him dearly. Um, I just I learned that I helped get that message through better if I didn't get real emotional. Um, if I just I just I literally stepped back and just let all this information come in without getting really emotionally connected to it. And then when I had the message, then I would read it then I would probably get more emotional and then I would go back and ask questions. But it's, it's a practice, you know, it's kind of like taking a, an observer role um, versus a, um, being um, right in the mix of it. Can I ask the message to be in a different language? Yeah, do you know the other language? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, gosh, yeah. I mean, practice. Do anything. I mean, try it all. Um, I think you could. I don't, you know, if, if it's a language you don't know, I don't know how you would know if it's right or not, but I guess you could Google it. But um, I mean, but you can go clear out to star languages, right? Um, you know, I think they, they want you to understand what they're trying to share with you. So they're going to take their language and they're going to translate it into earth language and your language. Um, I don't think I've ever had a, anybody say that the message came through in another language, um, but I guess anything is possible. Do you ever connect to multiple beings at one time? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh my gosh, oh yes, I've had so many cool ones with that. I've had um, whole councils come in and they take turns talking to me. Um, I had a group of four angels that came um, over the course of about a week. Um, Sometimes it would be all four of them talking. Sometimes it'd be one or two of them. Um, so, oh, and I've had um, early on, especially, I would have two at once. Um, I'd ask who's here and it'd be like um, God and Archangel Gabriel um, or my dad and God. Um, and it would be really interesting because the flavor, you know, I know what my dad's messages feel and, and, read like. I know what God's messages feel and read like. Um, and so it'd be fun for me to, to, to feel and read when they're merged. Um, so yeah, you can, yes, anything is possible. Can you briefly mention something about communicating with my twin flame? Well, you can ask to communicate to your twin flame. Um, I mean, just like you would anybody else. Um, Yeah, I mean, of course that would work, I think. No problems. Do you have a best practice for remaining neutral so as not to affect the outcome? 
I sometimes struggle in that area? That's a great question. Um, it's just practice, I think. You know, I, I, um, I, I, in the work that I do when I'm doing hypnosis or listening to people's life stories or, um, you know, over the years getting these messages, I just have honed the skill of staying neutral um, because then I'm not influencing. Um, and you can influence messages. So um, that's why it's really important not to do this when you're really upset, when you're um, overly tired, when you're grumpy, that can influence. Um, although I will say this, um, I haven't done this for a while, but there was a time when I would wake up in the middle of the night and I just couldn't sleep and I really felt pulled to go to my meditation room and sit down for a message. And I would be quite groggy with it and I would just, I would talk the message out, I would write it down as it came. I never read it right then. I padded back down to bed, fell asleep. And later on that day, I'd come up to my meditation room and look and go, oh my gosh, that's, that's really good. Um, but I, you know, I was just letting it come through. So, you know, that, that actually is a pretty good um, way of doing it. Not that I'm advocating that you don't sleep well and do messages in the middle of the night, but it's that feeling of um, not being so gripped into what the message is saying at that time. Just take a step back. Does the portal remain open when not in use like a Ouija board? I'm guessing yes. That being well, said, okay. Well, that being said, at the end of my session, can I request that the portal be closed, and then okay. of course request to reopen before starting the next session? Yes, absolutely. You can, it's it's your intention. It's your intention that's doing everything. And um, I only like cringe a little bit when it's you know compared in the same sentence with the word Ouija, because <laughs> that's not what this is at all. Um, but yeah, you know, a portal, you know. I have lots of friends that work with portals and they, I don't, you know, quite get what they're doing, but I am so amazed and interested that yes, I do think it's, I think it's a portal of love. You know, it's just, it's, it's super consciousness and it's all knowing. And, um, I see that as unconditional love. So it, yeah, it may be open and maybe that's why, you know, my meditation room feels really good. Um, but I only see positive in that probability. If the person we want to connect to lived in another language, can they answer in English? Yes, they will. Yes, it's yeah. It's like the great um, universal translate. I would say Google Translate, Universal Translate. They'll they will translate to your language. I, the ET that I um, I spoke with several ETs, but uh, Kig, the one that came through so often. Um, I'm sure English is not his language. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I could completely understand him, and it was no problem whatsoever. Can we share this information, or is it only for us? I don't know if that means, can you give the messages to other people, or can you do messages for people? Um, I mean, you can share your messages with anybody you want to that, you, you know, maybe they'll be open to it, maybe they won't, so don't, don't get too worried if they're not. It's not for them. Um, if, the, if you meant... Can you give messages to others? You can, you can. But I really, the whole point of sharing this gift is for people to get their own messages because you're, you're the filter. And I think, you know, even with great psychics and uh, intuitives, the information um, is still being filtered through them and their belief systems as it would be for you giving a message for somebody else. So I, I would rather teach somebody how to fish than to um, cook them dinner. So <laughs> that helps at all. We have one here that says, is there a time that we shouldn't do it or is any time okay? Any time is okay. You know, I just recommend that you're not overly tired, overly stressed out. Um, just because your energy level is kind of low at that point, um, and this is a lot of energy coming in. Sometimes it can just wipe you, um, you know, and, and it can also have the other effect too. You know, maybe if you're having a bad day, maybe the, you know, doing the, the message brings you up to just be mindful. If, if things are not going as easily as you would like them to, if the message is flowing as much as you would like it to, you know, maybe just go take a nap or, um, get some food or walk outside, be in nature and then come back. Okay, that's all I have. Okay, 
All right, excellent. Well, I hope that helped. I hope everybody um, enjoyed that and can start working on your messages. And, and if you have them, I would, if you want to share a little bit with me, oh my gosh, um, I would love to read them. It makes my face light up every time I read messages that others are getting from talk. Um, so you can email me or you can message me on Facebook. Thank you. 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 Thank you.